Hi everyone, this is Paul Helquist, Creative Director at Stray Kite Studios. We are a new, tiny little independent game developer located in Dallas, Texas. And we just released our first project through Fortnite Creative, Fortnite Prop Hunt. The reception for this has been simply amazing, we've been blown away, and we're really excited that you're all enjoying it. If you enjoy Prop Hunt and this video, we would really appreciate you making us your supported creator using code Stray Kite. So, what I have for you today is a tutorial to show you all of the settings that I used for the mode so that you can get them all just right in your very own Prop Hunt maps. Alright, let's dive right in. So let's start with the Game tab in the My Island Settings menu. So we go here and we'll start with the Game tab. So um, I set the voice chat to team only so that you can only talk to your team. But if you're planning on just playing with friends, you may want to set this to all so that you guys can, can tease each other and, and talk back and forth regardless of what team you're on. Uh, you want to set teams to two uh, because there's two teams. Spawns, you want to set to one. This ensures that when a prop is eliminated that uh, they are out of the game. But you also want to set the after last spawn you want to spectate so that people can continue to watch and root on their teammates. Total rounds should be set to two. Um, and team rotation should be set to every round. Team rotation ensures that uh, after round one that the teams will swap so everyone gets a chance to be a prop and a hunter. We found that five minutes was a good length that allowed uh, hunters some time to really start uh, finding people but it also gave props a chance to survive for the entire match so uh, you're welcome to try different settings but we found that five set in, five minutes works pretty well uh, let's see the next one that is important to set correctly is last standing you want last standing to be set to on uh, this ensures that if the hunters manage to find and eliminate all of the props that the round will end immediately and you won't have to wait for the timer to finish. Uh, I set auto start to 60 seconds. This means if somebody else is using your code, uh, how long until the round will start? 60 seconds gives people a little bit of time to join up if they're uh, you know, joining the server, um, but not so long that it will take forever before the match starts. Um, and lastly, it's really important to set the elimination score. This is for the scoring system. Elimination score sets how many points uh, the hunters will get when they get an elimination, and that is set to two. All right. The next thing we want to look at are the game settings. There's a couple of things in here, not too much though. Um, you can set your time of day, light brightness, all these things to, to fit whatever style of map you're making. I wanted a bright sunny day, uh, well lit, so I set it to 10 a.m. for uh, Stray Kite Farms. Uh, let's see, infinite ammo, you want to make sure this is off because we want those hunters to have to think about how much they're shooting so that there's a potential for them to run out and then be stuck uh, using the axe. Uh, let's see, next we have allow building. Make sure you uh, you could use building. Um, you obviously could. We set it to off um, for for the uh, for Stray Kite Farms, um, but that's something you could experiment with. Uh, and this is important. Though. This one is very important. Environment damage should be set to off. If you have this turned on, the hunters can basically destroy the entire map, and it gets really hard to hide when all of the props have been destroyed already. So that one's very important. Uh, you also want to set the pickaxe building damage to none, again, to make sure that the uh, world cannot be destroyed out from underneath the props. I recommend using down but not out set to off. Uh, when props go into a down but not out state, it's very difficult to tell what's happening, and so it's just much cleaner if, if that's set to off. You want both teams to keep their items when they're eliminated. You want to set this to keep. Um, the game can get really messed up when props manage to get their hands on weapons and hunters get their hands on the prop weapon. So you want everyone to keep their items when they're eliminated so that they will not uh, be dropped. To 
really make sure that doesn't happen. I also set allow items to be dropped to no and make sure that no one can pick any of those things up either. Uh, then there's a lot of things here, fall damage, gravity, jump fatigue. These are all things that you can set however you want your game to play. Um, I have them pretty much set on defaults. Uh, I do, we did like glider redeploy set to on. It allows the hunters to kind of quickly move around the map and uh, allows the props, if they're being really crafty, to do the same. Um, let's see, what else? Player names and locations. Make sure you set this to team only. If you have it set to always show, then it's pretty easy to find the props because they will be uh, always on the screen. So you want those to be team only. And that is all. Oh, no, the last one is allow manual respawning. I recommend putting this to no so that uh, people can't manually respawn during the game. On these tabs, I always recommend once you're finished, always hit apply. Uh, make sure that those settings get saved. Let me jump back in. Uh, next, we have the UI settings, and this sets up how the scoreboard works. Uh, at the end of rounds and at the end of the match. Um, since in Prop Hunt, the way we've set it up, um, you don't really win a round. It is designed such that the hunters should generally have more points than the, uh, than the props after each round. So showing who won the round really doesn't mean anything. So we uh, set that to don't show. Um, you want to set the HUD type to score. This ensures that the little uh, score element will appear on the HUD so players can track how they're doing during the course of a round. And then you can set up the win conditions here. And um, the most important here is the scoreboard win condition. And you want to set that to score to make sure that the team with the most points will win the game. And then the other three are really, I put them up here just so that people could kind of see who did what and how well they did but they also actually work as tiebreakers. So it's something to be aware of when you're setting up your game. So um, the team with the most eliminations would win if the score was tied and then assists and on down the line. And then the last thing in here that you wanna set is you wanna go to your description and name your map whatever you like and uh, describe how your map functions. And that is it for all of these options. And we've applied, so we'll close that. And um, next we need to look at the team settings and inventory devices for each team. There's a lot of things going on over there that control how this mode works. Now I tucked those devices uh, in behind the little shed that the hunter started, so let's fly over there and see how I set that up. So here are my team inventory devices sitting back here, one for each team. And we'll start with the props. It's fairly simple. Um, as you can see, the uh, Propomatic is there. That is the only item that the prop team needs. So all you have to do there is bring up the creative inventory, go to the weapons tab, find your Propomatic. Uh, you would equip that, then drag it out of your inventory from your play inventory you drag it onto the uh, um, onto the device here and that would add it to it and now let me show you how the settings are set up here for the props team name set it to props you can put that to whatever you like the props are team number one um, uh, visible during game you want that to be off most likely uh, let's see, the only other thing that's really important for the props is two things, two things, if I'm remembering this correctly. The first, I'll jump to because it's right here down at the bottom, is elimination score. Now, if you remember, back in the game settings, we put the elimination score at two, but we don't want the props to score any points if they manage to kill a hunter with their axe. So you want to override that value here in the team settings for the props and set that to zero. 
The other thing that's important is up at the top, uh, and it's this max health here. So we set the max health for the prop to 50. So what this really is controlling is how much health the prop players have when they are a human. Because the health of the prop uh, is generally determined by the size of the prop they possess. But if they turn back into a human, we wanted to make sure they had a very low amount of health, close to the smaller, um, the health of the smaller props. What this did was avoid some exploits that some of us did during playtests where we would purposely turn into a human in order to um, exploit how much starting health you had. So I like to set this down to 50 which is about as much as the smallest props have. So that's it for the prop team. Now the hunter team is a little bit more complicated because they have much more uh, inventory that you have to set up. So um, you can set up your inventory however you like um, and it's, there's lots of options of course. We decided to go with the scope pistol, the silent submachine gun, the boogie bomb, uh, some extra ammunition for both of the, the firearms, then the boom bow, and shotgun shells are the ammo for the boom bow, so there's a little bit extra for the boom bow as well. Um, so the, um, the only thing with the setting up the inventory that I did that was a little bit different is the amount of shotgun shells for the boom bow. I wanted you to have 10 shots with the boom bow. Um, now the boom bow comes with one shot, and the shotgun stack is much bigger than, than 10, so I had to shoot off a bunch of, of uh, Boombo uh, to get the stack of ammo down to nine. So before you drop the stack of ammo on for the shotgun shells, you wanna get that stack down to nine, and then the one from the Boombo will give you an even 10. Okay. Now let's take a look at some of the settings. There's a few extra things here to make sure the hunters are all set up properly. Hunters are team number two. Um, most of this is not set to override until we get down to these new settings that uh, were released in 930 that relate to how you can get uh, weapons to damage players when they use them. So we wanted to have the hunters have to think about using the pickaxe. So we set the damage self weapon filter to pickaxe only. Then the damage self target filter mean to non players. So this means if I hit the pickaxe and do not hit a player, then it will do some damage to me. The options here are non players or players or both. Um, and so you want this to be uh, non-players because we don't want them to take damage if they successfully damage a prop. You want it to only be when uh, they damage the world. Now we want to set how much damage they do and that's this damage self on hit amount. So if you hit a non-player with the pickaxe it will deal one damage to the hunter. And you can of course set this to all different kinds of settings but we picked one which gives you about a hundred uh, hits with your with your axe before you would uh, kill yourself. It's also important to do damage self requires non-zero damage. You want to set this to no because we have the pickaxe dealing zero damage to the world. You have to set this to no so that zero damage will still count uh, and and cause this damage to happen. So these four right here um, are set exactly how you'd want them so that the pickaxe will deal some damage to the hunters. Once again, just to make sure no one can pick up or drop anything, I set both of these to no. Um, and everything else is pretty much set to the default. So you're good to go there. So that's the core of the mode, and with some player starts you'd, and just doing those steps, you'd be ready to play some prop hunt. Um, now we found that the mode needed a little something extra to entice the props to take a little bit, uh, take some more risks, so we added the scoring system for eliminations and for coins. 
So now I'd like to show you how I set up the coins. So let me go find a coin and I'll first show you the settings on that. Here's one here. Okay. First thing is to set the score. The, the coins are set to be worth one point. Um, then these few settings down here are also important. So collecting team, you want to be team one. This makes sure that only the prop team can pick it up. Consume if collected by should be either anyone or team. Um, anyone just sort of um, make sure you get everyone. And be between the two of these, it means anyone on team one can will consume it. Um, but we also want the hunters to be able to see the coins. So we want them to be visible to the opposing team until they're collected. This ensures that the hunters can see the coins, but once a prop collects them, they will then be removed. Um, you also want visible on game start set to off so that props cannot collect the coins before the hunters are released. Um, and that is the next thing I will go over here. You also want to set turn visibility on when receiving from to channel one. And uh, I'll explain how that works now. This is related to the new trigger uh, system that was at also added in 930. So you want to set that to channel one and then I'll show you how I get those coins to show up after the game has already started. So to do that, you need to use a trigger device. And I tucked mine way back here off stage. And this is the trigger device right here. And those can be found in your creative inventory under devices. And it is this thing right up here in the corner, the trigger. Okay, so here's how we set up that trigger. We don't want this to be triggered by players. So I set that to off, but I did want it to be triggered by damage. So I set that to be on. I only want it to ever be triggered once. And then uh, I set the delay to 30 seconds. So this means after it is triggered by taking damage, it will wait 30 seconds before it sends a message out into the world. Uh, Enabled on minigame start is enabled because we want it to be listening for damage right off the bat. And then the next thing that's important is when triggered, transmit on channel one. So if you remember, we were just looking at the coins. The coins had uh, were set so that they would uh, set their visibility to on when they received on channel one. And this trigger is transmitting on channel one. So how does the trigger get take damage? Well, that's what this explosive device is for that I have sitting right on top of it. So I don't want this to damage players, but I do want it to damage structures because the trigger is a structure. Um, everything in the map is indestructible because of the, the, the damage to the world setting we set way before. So you need damage indestructible buildings to be yes. Uh, blast radius I set to really small, so it'll pretty much only affect the trigger. And time to detonation from game start is set to 30 seconds. That I believe is all of the important things here. So how this whole chain of events works is the game starts, the barrel waits 30 seconds. It then explodes, which then deals damage to the trigger, which then waits another 30 seconds, and then transmits on channel one. And if you remember correctly, the coins are then listening for channel a message on channel one and will turn their visibility to on. So 30 seconds happens goes by, the barrel explodes, then the trigger waits 30 more seconds and unhides all of the coins. So the coins appear one minute after the game starts. That's how that is all set up. It's a little tricky, but pretty cool. These new triggers are extremely powerful. 
right, what is next? Um, the last thing uh, that I was thinking about showing you here is how I release the hunters from their shed. And that is in this little entryway here. Again, I'm using explosive devices. I've got two explosive devices. They're set up exactly the same. So I'll just show you this one. Um, player damage set to zero. Structure damage set to 50. 50 is a very specific number because these garage doors have 40 health. So if I set them to 50, it will destroy the doors but not destroy the walls around them, which have more than uh, 50 health. Uh, you need damage indestructible buildings set to yes, since everything in the map is set to indestructible, so you need these barrels to be able to still damage them. Health I set to indestructible just in case players found some way to deal damage to the barrels. I did not want them to uh, blow up, so to keep the hunters in. Blast radius is at a quarter of a tile. This ensures that, again, it will pretty much only damage the door. Knockback is set to off, so if anyone was standing near the door, they would not get blasted across the map when uh, the barrels go off. And then lastly, time to detonation from game start is 30 seconds. So the game starts 30 seconds later, both of these barrels blow up, um, eliminating these two doors and letting the hunters out into the map. And that's pretty much everything. Um, oh, there is one more thing now that I think about it. You also want to make sure that you have plenty of barriers around your play space because you don't want the props to be able to run off into the, the vista, the edge of your map, and, uh, and then you know never be found because the hunters will not be able to uh, get out. So you want to put ba barriers around. And one little pro tip that uh, I wanted to share uh, that I had trouble with um, is if you're really small props, if the if the barriers are on the floor like this uh, start point is, the thickness of the trap uh, does not get covered by the barrier. So really small props were able to slide under the barrier. So what I had to do is I had to put floating platforms underneath the terrain and put the barriers on the floating platforms. And this ensured that the blocking area would go all the way down to the floor uh, up on the terrain. So just a little detail. I uh, hope you avoid a bug that I ran into when, when we were playtesting. And uh, that should do it. Thank you so much for watching and for playing Prop Hunt. Again, if you are enjoying Prop Hunt and would like to see more fun game modes like Prop Hunt from us, please support a creator using code STRAYKITE and follow us on your favorite social media platforms. Thanks again, and have fun!